I think it's always important to remember that Steve Mnuchin's not really calling the shots in these negotiations. It's Robert Lighthizer, the trade representative, and he's an extremely tough negotiator. Nothing really that came out of last week's negotiation suggested to me that the Chinese are going to make sufficient concessions to satisfy him, to satisfy Lighthizer on key issues, particularly their strategy known as Made in China 2025 right. to race up the value chain by fair means or foul. So I think it's way too early to say that a deal is in prospect. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if we ended up with higher tariffs uh, on March the 1st. Because 10 percent tariffs, Neil, are one thing. And even with those, we saw perhaps companies racing to get goods into this country ahead of that imposition. And then this this drop off, even maybe clear in the data this morning afterwards, if it if it looks like we're heading towards 25 percent tariffs, wouldn't we see that an outsized effect. It seems to me that most companies don't think this is actually coming. Well, I think the media have tended to talk, and I've heard this also on Wall Street, as if a trade deal is, uh, is just around the corner. But I think it's a mistake to assume that when really the Chinese haven't addressed key issues uh, on Robert Lighthizer's agenda. Remember also that on, on the president has been a very consistent uh, believer in using tariffs in this way uh, to get gains and concessions from um, trading partners. Uh, so I think one needs to remember that for this to change, for there to be some kind of deal before March the 1st, either the Chinese have to make substantial new concessions, which they're extremely reluctant to make. Liu He does not want to have to make uh, a big uh, concession on Made in China 2025, or President Trump is going to overrule Robert Lighthizer and say, I'm going to take this deal even though you don't like it. And right. I, that, that strikes me as an unlikely scenario. But Neil, another point people have made is that it's unrealistic for us to really expect the Chinese to change. If anything, they become more authoritarian under the current leadership, not more willing to open themselves up. So does anybody really think even if they, they make gestures, yes, we're starting this, you know, review council for patents and we're opening up, a, that, that that's genuine progress? Kelly, I think we have to distinguish between the political and the economic here. There's no question that China's going in a more authoritarian direction under Xi Jinping. But on, on the trade issue, they are mightily afraid of an escalation of this trade war because it hurts them significantly more than it True. hurts the United States. They're desperate for a deal, but they really don't want to have to sacrifice their core strategy, uh, which is to get up the technology value chain to a position of equality with the United States. That is really central to Xi Jinping's grand strategy for China. And I think President Trump is quite right in wanting to try to check that initiative and to use the trade war to achieve it. Remember, the key point, Kelly, is that a trade war is in the process of metamorphosing into a tech war. Yes. And that you tech war Intel. is not going to yeah. go away yeah. anytime soon. A lot soon. of these American companies could be tied up in that. Okay, Neil, thank you for now. Appreciate it. Neil Ferguson. Uh, Dan D'Amico, let me bring My you pleasure. and talk a little bit more about the, the manufacturing aspect of this, which also is highly sensitive. But the manufacturing barometers have been you know, pretty healthy so far. They fluctuated a little bit, but overall they still suggest an expanding sector, don't they? Yes, they are. And if I might comment on uh, what Neil had to say, I'd be in complete agreement with everything uh, that he said. Um, the only exception I would take is that uh, uh, Z, the, 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 the president of China, Xi, is uh, not interested in equality with the United States. He's interested in dominating those those fields of, of high technology and the technology of the future. He's made that very clear. Regarding manufacturing, um, the Trump strategy that was put together when we were all inputting into it uh, during the campaign as advisors to him, um, both from the trade and economic standpoint, has been to go through and focus on what uh, Secretary Mnuchin said this morning, yeah. and that is tax reform, trade reform, regulatory reform, and energy reform. And all those things working together in a synergistic way. And Dan, you, have, could, ha you could argue we've gotten three out of four of those, right? I mean, you could say we've got tax reform, we've gotten some regulatory reform, even some energy reform. But what about trade? This is the big one, right? For the next two right. years, a lot's going to depend on what happens over the next month, isn't it? You can count on the president sticking to his guns and to be deferring to, pre to uh, Robert Lighthizer, the USTR, who we worked with very closely during the transition. Um, you can count on him being tough. He wants a deal. There's no doubt about it. The Chinese want it more. Uh, but he's not going to do it without getting those fundamental changes. Such as? And such as the, uh, the stopping the intellectual property theft, um, reciprocal trade, 
um, and uh, a free and level playing field. And for them to become more of a market economy, not a state-owned economy, Dan, which is exactly really the opposite of what they've been doing.